All right, so we're going to do a quick review of negative exponents and exponents with fractions. So if you have a fraction like, let's say, 3 over 5, and you square this, right, what does that mean? Well, this means that you can square both numerator and denominator separately. So it's 3 squared over 5 squared, in this case, 9 over 25, right? And if there are no common factors, you've reduced it, in this case, right, 9's only factors are 9, 3, and 1, and only 1 is the other common factor in 25, right? So there's nothing to reduce here, and you're done. But what if we had um, 3 over 5 to the negative 2? What would this mean? Well, the simple and mechanical answer you might hear is to flip the fraction, that's what the negative sign will do, and then square it. Or square it and then flip it, right? Both ways will, it'll work out. So we'll try both of them. And then we'll, we'll talk about some background here about why this makes a lot of sense. So in the first case, let's flip it first, right? And now instead of negative two, we just have two. If, once you flip it, that is, you've applied the negative part of the exponent, and then you square both parts. So five squared over three squared which is 25 over 9, okay? And that's the answer. Or here, instead of flipping it first, we can square it first, right? So we get 3 squared over 5 squared, and this would be to the negative 1 power, because if you think about these exponents, right, it's true that negative 2 can really be thought of as negative 1 times 2. Right, because negative 1 times 2, that's negative 2. Those are, the, those are equivalent. And here we've applied the 2, we've squared it, but we haven't applied the negative 1, which connects to what we did before. Right? Negative 2 is really just, again, negative 1 times 2. When we flipped the fraction, that's like applying the negative 1 reciprocal and then squaring it. So a side note is that the negative 1 exponent, right? what will it do? It will flip, right? Negative 1 exponent will flip or take the reciprocal of uh, it would, it would take the reciprocal of a fraction or it will flip a fraction, right? The fraction's numerator and denominator. And now we can finish this, right? So we have 3 squared over 5 squared is 9 over 25. And then now we apply the negative 1 exponent and that will flip it over to get 25 over 9, which is what we got before. So you can flip it and then square it, or square it then flip it. Um, but what's happening here, right? What's going on? Well, we need to talk about negative exponents for a moment. So if we have 3 to the third power, that means what? Well, it means 1 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And you might usually just think of it as 3 times 3 times 3, which is equivalent, right? Because here I'm just multiplying by 1. Nothing really different, but this will help us understand a simple pattern. So here we have 1 times 3 times 3, that's 3 squared, and that's 9. And then 3 to the first, which is just 1 times 3. 3 to the 0, following the pattern, is only 1, right? Because the exponent matches the number of factors of 3, but the 1s always remain constant. And now we move to 3 to the negative 1 and discover kind of why the negative number flips a fraction or... In this case, it is flipping the number. We'll get one-third instead of three over one. Um, but what it really means is division. Because here, if you notice, first we had 27, then we had 9, then we had 3, then we had 1. If you follow this pattern, we're dividing by 3, right, as we lower the powers of the exponents. So next, we divide by 3 again, and we get 1 divided by 3, which is the reciprocal of 3 to the first, by the way and we get one-third. And then three to the negative two, that's one divided by three divided by three, which is not one over three, but one over nine, which is the reciprocal of three squared. So these negative exponents refer to division, right? And they flip any number, because essentially, it, it one, in one way of thinking about this, is that you start with one and then divide by the base. So what does that mean with fractions? Well, with a fraction, let's like, say, 3 fourths. Well, if we take that to the negative second power, what does this really mean? Well, it means take the number 1 and divide it by this fraction right here. Right? 1 divided by 3 fourths. Kind of like 
with three, 3 to the negative second, we did 1 divided by this base, right, squared. So here it's 1 divided by 3 fourths squared. So what does this mean? Well, let's square this over here. We get 9 over 16, so now we have 1 divided by 9 sixteenths. But what do you know about dividing fractions? Well, when you divide fractions, what do you do? Well, you multiply, right, and then multiply by the reciprocal, right? So it is 1 times 16 over 9, which is 16 ninths. And notice that, what is the answer? Well, it's the original flipped upside down and squared. Because essentially you're dividing 1 by whatever fraction you have. And when you divide, you flip, right? You multiply and then flip your fraction. Uh, and if, you're, if you remember why that makes sense, uh, for example, 2 divided by a fourth. Why, do we, why is this equal 2 times 4 over 1? Right, why is it equal 8? Well, remember what division means with fractions. It's saying how many 1 fourths fit into 2 holes. If you have 1, 2 holes, and there are how many fourths does it take to fill up 2 holes? Well, each hole has 4 fourths. So altogether, it's 4 times 2, or 8 pieces, right? And there's a lot going on here with this, but uh, as a simple algorithm, you might just flip when you see the negative every time flip and then apply the exponent. That might be a nice way of dealing with it. Thanks.